Let's say a little bit more about variables. Specifically, let's talk about how to name the variables and let's talk about the different data types we can use. Before I begin, the first thing I should mention is that this name, x, is not a particularly good name for a variable. A good programmer would not normally do that. A better name would give some sort of indication as to what type of data is being stored in that variable. For example, if I was going to store somebody's age in that variable, I would probably call my variable I age. So I'm just going to rename it with a bit of copying and pasting throughout my program. Okay, so this variable is storing the age of a 10-year-old. Notice that I've used mixed case in the variable name. You're not allowed to use spaces, so I've used a capital A there. I've also prefixed it with the letter I to indicate that it's an integer type. As I said before, a variable's contents can change while the program is running. So let's prove that. I'm going to type I age equals 15 and then output its contents again. Let's run that program. Actually, I've just noticed something here. I've spelt message box wrong. I see that because it didn't recapitalize it when I moved off the line. OK, let's run the program. First it has a 10 in it, and then it has a 15. Let's understand what's going on. I assigned a value of 10, I output it, and then I assigned a different value to that variable. And it's important to realize that when you reassign a value to a variable, you are overwriting its original contents. So the contents of this variable is varying as the program runs. You might have also noticed that when I typed the name of that variable here, I typed it in lower case. And I did that quite deliberately so that when I move off the line, I can see it recapitalizing in the way which I declared it in the first place. I'm getting a little bit of extra visual feedback. Let's have another variable. I'm going to declare another one using the dim statement, but this time I want to store somebody's name. So I'm going to use a different type of variable this time. I'm going to use a string variable. So I'm prefixing its name with st because it will be a string. Again, you can see I'm using mixed case. And the as clause will allow me to specify it has a type of string. In my program, I will give it a value. And because it's a string, I've put that inside double quotes this time. And then I will output the contents of that variable. Let's try the program. That seems to be working fine. Let's have another variable, another dim statement. This time I'm going to store somebody's salary, for example. I'm going to use a currency data type this time, so I'm going to prefix it with a C. And then the name gives some indication of what data is going into that, and I'm going to use a data type of currency. I'll assign a value to this variable. See salary equals fifty thousand pounds, you wish, and I'll output this one. Run my program, and we can see what I've done is I've declared a number of variables, I've assigned values to them at different points in my program, and I'm outputting their contents at different points in the program. There's all kinds of different data types I can use when I'm declaring a variable. We've seen an integer, we've seen a string, we've seen a currency. If I want to store somebody's date of birth, for example, I would use a date type. That's this one here. When I'm assigning a value to a date variable, I would do it like this. I use hash signs. So that, I would expect to be the 11th of February, 1962. In actual fact, it's not. It's the 2nd of November, 1962, 
when I'm assigning values in code, I need to use the American format. So it's month, day, year. However, because I'm using a, a machine which has been set up to display dates in British format, if I run this, you can see it's coming back in a slightly different order. That is the 2nd of November 1962. It's just something we need to be aware of if we're working on a British machine. Other data types I can use include a double. Maybe I want to store somebody's height. Uh, and what a double will allow me to do is to assign a real number. And by a real number, I mean a number with decimal places rather than an integer. So for example, dbl height. Oh, spell it right. dbl height equals 1.6 meters tall, for example. So to summarize, when we declare a variable, we should really use a name which is meaningful so that when someone's reading my code, they have some indication of what's going into that variable and, of course, its data type. Notice also I've used mixed case. And I've done that deliberately, first of all, so I can read this more easily. And secondly, when I use it in the body of my program, I will type it in lowercase. And as I move off the line, I can see recapitalization to indicate that I've typed it correctly. When I declare a variable, I use an as clause to specify its data type. These are the main data types you'll come across. Actually, there's one more, which is quite useful, and we'll see it in use later. And that's the so-called Boolean data type. I usually prefix that with a B. And for example, I might want to store whether somebody is a vegetarian or not. So I'm going to declare that as a Boolean. The thing about a Boolean variable is it can hold a yes or a no value, or to be more precise, a true or a false. So B vegetarian equals, and I can have one of these two values. And that can be quite useful. We'll see later. This person is not a vegetarian.